So we're talking about a couple of things today. We're talking about, it's still 4.1. We're doing 4.1 part three. It is our final part of 4.1. And what we are talking about is two main things, which is angular, angular, eular, and linear speed. And then we are also going to be talking about the area sector of a circle. Um, and those are the main things that we are going to go over. And it's all very formulaic. Um, which means that there's formulas, right, for each of these pieces. It's just understanding how to make those formulas work. And I think with this one, I am going to start out by giving you a couple of the formulas and how they can kind of work together. Um, if you remember when we were talking before about um, arc length, we learned that arc length was, we learned that arc length was S equals, see my lights flicker? <laughs> S equals the radius times theta, right? And sometimes we, if we were looking for the radius, we would have to manipulate the equation and stuff like that. Well, our first formula that we're talking about for today is going to be linear speed. Again, the lights flickered. I might wind up losing you guys at some point. If it does happen that I lose you, I at some point today or tomorrow will just make a full video lesson of this and, and post it to Google Classroom for you guys to watch because with the way the lights are flickering and there's all three of us going at the same time, I might just get kicked off because of the wind. So um, everybody please turn your cameras on though. You're just supposed to be on camera. Actually, you know what? I'm going to forgive that today. Don't worry about being on camera because I know the wind kind of messes with, uh, with speed. No worries, Annalise. It happens. Yeah, feel free to be invisible today if it helps your internet out. Um, I won't mark anyone absent for not being on camera. So linear speed is represented by the letter V in the same respect that uh, arc length was re represented by the letter S. Linear speed is represented by the letter V. And the formula for linear speed is V equals the arc length. over time. But if you guys remember, the arc length is just this formula right here, this S equals R times theta. So we could say that linear speed is just the arc length over time, or we could write it as the radius times the angle, the central angle over time. And the reason I bring that up is because you don't necessarily know what you're going to be giving. But if you realize that all of these different things represent that same thing, um, it will really help you out. So what do we have? We have, oops, we have V, which is linear speed equals S over T or it equals radius times theta over t, right? And I know that like this is a lot, but it, it will help you down the road to have all of this information on hand to look back at, because you're going to be getting these problems. You're like, which formula do I use? Um, and you'll be able to see, well, oh, I don't necessarily have... Like if I'm given the radius, well, then I just need that 
angle to get the arc length, right? I just need to know what that angle is. Sometimes you'll just be given the radius and that central angle. You won't necessarily be given the arc length, but you kind of know. You'll see what I mean. I have some examples of it coming up. The next thing that I want to talk to you about would be angular speed. So when we're talking about angular speed and linear speed, well, let me get the formula down first, and then I'll tell you what the difference is between them. So if linear speed is V, angular speed is represented as W, and W equals the central, ooh, the central angle, which is just theta. Right? If you remember, that's just theta over time. So really, W equals theta over time. Now, linear is like how fast a particle is moving. Like we have this piece of something and how fast it's moving. It doesn't matter what it is, like just something that's moving through space and we are measuring how fast it is going. Um, and it could be a straight line. It could be with an arc, right? But we're literally talking about how fast a, a thing is going. With angular speed, we're talking about how fast an angle is changing, right? So um, windshield wipers, right? Think about windshield wipers, right? Windshield wipers start down here and then move across your windshield, right? Back and forth. And angular speed would measure how fast that is changing, like, like how fast that angle is moving where or yeah we'll have other examples of it but that's a good one i think for because people are always wondering not people not generally most people don't wonder about it but people who are learning about it wonder about like what's the difference between linear and angular speed um you know it's actually kind of useful stuff especially like in uh in engineering um, and engineering anything too, not just the topic or subject of engineering, but anything that we engineer because we have to ha know how pieces move within each other. Um, and I want you to remember, we talked about it a little earlier, but that since we have that arc length equals uh, the radius times theta, we also have then that v right our linear speed equals s over theta right because s is arc length it also equals radius over times theta over time sorry s over time radius times theta over time right because s and radius times theta are interchangeable you can use either one of these equations or formulas based on uh, uh, whatever it is that you need. Another thing that V equals that linear speed is equal to is the radius times the angular speed. So if you know the angular speed and the radius, you multiply them together and you have the uh, the linear speed. Um, I just think those things help out. We know that W equals theta over T, and I just think it always helps to have all of those formulas in front of you when you're working on stuff like that. And in case you're watching the video later, I'm going to put this in. I'm just going to label each of these formulas. This is arc length. Right, the, these are linear speed. And this one is angular speed. 
Oh, if you come by and look at it later, you've got all of them together. Um, and you can see which each one's referred to. But I'm going to move into some examples now. Um, I really hope I have time to get through all of this. I hope, I hope, I hope. Um, because I do not want to spend another day in 4.1 because I am so sick of this section. I'm ready to move on to the next section. Um, so when we're talking about finding linear speed, which is a lot of what we're going to be doing, is we're going to find linear speed, and then we're going to find angular speed as well. So in finding linear speed, Um, we'll just do it with an example. So say I have the second hand of a clock, right? I've got a clock here. We're at 12, 3, 6, 9, right? And this clock has a second hand. Let's say it's this long, right? Say I have a, uh, the second hand of a clock is, ah, come on. We've got a second hand of a clock. This is a word problem, but I'm taking the words out to shorten it. So I have to write as much. It is 10.2 centimeters, right? We want to find the linear speed of the tip of this as it goes around the clock, right? So it's going here, and it's going around the clock. So we want to find... the linear speed, linear speed of the tip of the second hand. as it passes around the clock, of the, the face of the clock, as it passes around. So what in radians is a circle? Like all the way around, if I was going to go all the way around a circle, what would I have in radians? Do you guys remember? Like if I started here at like normally zero and I went all the way around, if I got halfway around, we'd have pi. If I got all the way around, what would I have? Like, you know, it's 360 degrees. What is it in? Yeah, pi to, two pi, pi times two. Right, so we know all the way around the circle is 2 pi, right? So it says it's taking one rotation. That's our distance around the circle, right? That's going to be our, our S, our arc length. That distance around the circle is going to be the radius times that central angle. For us, that angle that we've got is 2 pi, right? It's going all the way around the circle when it makes a rotation. And so we know that linear speed is V equals S over T, right? That arc length over T. So we need to know what the arc length is. And right now, all we have is that we have a radius, right? That is 10.2 centimeters, right? And that we have an arc length that is, I mean, sorry, we, we have a theta that is 2 pi, right? Our angle is 2 pi, right? goes all the way around the circle. So we need to find S so we can start solving this, right? S is just R times theta. And we have r and we have theta. So it's 2 pi times 10.2. And when I do that, 2, that will be 
20.4 pi, right? Two times 10.2 is 20.4, and we'll just leave the pi as pi, because who doesn't like pi? And this is centimeters. Now, the other thing that we know is that the time that it takes to go around the circle is one minute, right? Because it's a second hand, right? The second hand goes all the way around the clock in 60 seconds, right? One minute. So in this case, the time for that rotation is one minute, but we need it in seconds, which so that would be 60 seconds. So we have all the pieces now that we need. We know what S is and we know what T is. So when we go to solve this formula, our V, our linear speed, come on, our linear speed, this V equals S over T, well, we're just going to use our S, which we know is 20.4 pi centimeters over time, which is 60 seconds. And we're going to just plug that into a calculator, right? And we are going to get approximately, I should make these like wavy equals because it's not exact, right? approximately, because we're rounding a decimal, 1.07 centimeters per second, right? And so that's how fast that tip is going around the circle. Um, and that's all we need for linear speed. What we need for, when we start putting that together with, the angular speed, you'll see that pretty much all of your problems aren't going to just ask you, none of, nothing's going to ask you for just the linear speed, but I find the linear speed to be the one that's more complicated to get. Um, oh, wow, Kevin, that's awful. I'm glad it wasn't like into the house. In most of your problems, you won't be asked to find your linear speed. You'll be asked to find the linear, the angular and linear speeds. So we're going to do an example of that. And see, if I slow down, I can write really nice on this, but then I have to go slow. change the color so we can see that we're working on something different now. Our example is going to ask us, it's going to tell us the blades of a wind turbine. Does anyone know what a wind turbine is, what it looks like? You guys have all seen them. Yeah. You see them when you drive out like to the Palm Springs area and there's fields of those big white like windmills, like with the three arms that spin. Those are wind turbines. So blades of a wind turbine are 116 feet long. Wow. I wonder if that's how long they really are. Um, the propeller rotates at 15 revolutions per minute. So, propeller rotates at ooh, 15 
I am not having luck today with this thing. Per minute. So think about that. The last time when we did the clock, we just wanted it once. How long does it take to get once around? Now we're saying that in one minute, it goes around 15 times, right? Um, A, we want to find the angular speed. Find the angular speed of the propeller in radians per minute. Radi find the angular speed of propeller. Uh, in radians per minute. So we want to make sure it's in radians. So we're going to use pi again per minute. And B, we're going to find the linear speed of the tip of the blade. So. Here we go. You ready? We're going to start with point part A because that makes sense, right? So part A says that we've got a revolution is two radians, right? I, I mean two pi. Right, one revolution is two pi, right? Dang it. So one revolution is two pi, but we have 15 revolutions, right? It says that it revolves 15 revolutions per minute. So in one minute's time, which is our measurement, we know that it's going to go. 15 times. So if we think about that, our, our W, our angular speed, right? If we think about it in terms of, remember when I said that, that if, if we look at the formula for it, angular speed was W over theta over time, right? Um, that central angle over time. But we don't know what the central angle is, right? But we know what the radius is, right? Because it gave us that the radius is 116 feet. Correct? Um Well, before we even get, we don't even need the radius for this one today, right now. What we need to know is that we have two pi, right? And that two pi is going to be multiplied times 15 because it's going around 15 times, right? And so basically our theta here is going to be 30 pi, right? 15 times 2 is 30, and we'll just keep the pi alone. So our theta, right, is 30 pi. Our time, again, is 1 minute, right? And so our angular speed is just 30 pi, right? So this first part didn't even matter what our radius was yet. We don't care about that till we get to the linear speed because we were able to find it. We knew that it's 2 pi around. We know that it goes 15 times around in that minute. That's all we need to know because that's what we're looking for, right? That change in angle over the course of a minute. So the math on that's really easy because it's just one minute. We don't have to really divide by anything. 
Um, our linear speed, though, our part B says find the linear speed of the tip of the blade, right? And so for part B, er, so this was our part A. Down here, we're going to do our part B. And our linear speed, we know, is V equals arc length over time, right? And if you remember, our arc length is radius times theta. And those are two pieces of information that we have, right? If you think about it, our radius we were given, it was a R equals 116 feet, right? Our theta, we just found, our theta is 30 pi, right? And then our time, again, is still just one minute. And so what we're left with here is 116 times 30 pi over one minute. Right? This is radians or feet. This, this would be feet, right? Because we're measuring distance now. Feet over one minute. Right, and so really, it's just 116 times 30 pi. Luckily, I actually already have the answer to this on a card, so I don't have to go find it. That's going to be 10,933 feet per minute. That's pretty dang fast. So you will wind up finding your way into tutoring at some point with the linear and angular speed. So I look forward to seeing you there. I have one more thing I have to get through, one more formula I have to work through for you, and then I will let you go, although class will probably be over by the time I'm done with it. But, but I don't want to come back to this again. And the last bit is the area sector of an angle. So the area sector of an angle. I think this one is pretty easy, though, so we should get through it pretty quickly. So think about this. If I have a circle, and then I have this angle within the circle that's mapped out, the area sector is just the area of this piece of the angle or whatever central angle is like if the, the central angle is in here it's this one if the central angle was on the outside it would be the area of that piece um, and when we look at the formula for it it's just the area equals one half the radius squared times theta so if i have like a sprinkler on a golf course, you know, one of those that kind of goes like certain difference, say like, here's my golf course, right? And then I have a sprinkler right here and it kind of covers the space like that. You know, they go like left to right. So that is my sprinkler on my golf course. I'm a really good artist. So say I have a golf course sprinkler, a sprinkler, Sprinkler sprays um, distance of 70 feet. Right? So this length right here would be 70 feet, right? And it would keep being 70 feet as it moved around, right? Think of it as like that second hand on a clock, right? It's always going to go the same distance, just how the angle is changing. Um, and it rotates through an angle of 120 degrees. So this theta here would be 120 degrees, right? So we're saying theta rotates 120 degrees. So theta equals 1 
20 degrees. It wants us to find the area of this fairway on the golf course that's actually being watered by this sprinkler. So here's the big thing with this. Must be measured in radians. Must be measured in radians. Probably the hardest part of this problem, right? Because we got to convert our 120 degrees to radians, which remember, we just multiply 120 times pi over 180, right? And this becomes 120. I didn't know I could do that. 120 pi over 180, and we reduce the fraction, and we would get. Each of them is divisible by 60. That would be 2 pi over 3 radians, right? And what are we looking for? We are looking for the area. So we want to find the area sector of this circle. And so now we need to look into our formula. What we know now is that our theta wants to move around on me. Our theta now equals 2 pi over 3. We know that our radius equals 70 feet. And now we have everything we need for the formula, and we just have to plug it in. So to solve it, we're going to have 1 half our radius. Well, that's, I'll just put it in here, 70 uh, squared times. 2 pi over 3. Now, 70 squared is, is 4,900. So we have 4,900. Well, the whole thing, I plugged it all into a calculator earlier, and I got it equals 4,900 pi over 3. When you do the whole thing, when you do... 70 squared times 2, you get 4,900. And then uh, over 3, you get 4,900 pi over 3. Uh, if you want to find the fraction, the decimal answer, just plug it into a calculator. And you get 5131 one, feet squared or square feet either way. Um, it's not a difficult equation. It's The biggest thing is you have to remember that you're going to be given degrees. Don't forget to convert them into radians. Um, and have your formulas in front of you when you're doing it. Highly recommend just have like a little card with all the formulas written down because it's so much easier for you to do when you have all of the formulas there and you're not having to go back through your notes to find them to like have like a little formula card uh right in front of you um that's it i know it was really long but we had a lot to get through uh uh but that's pretty much it 